Hello, I am Dr. Nishi Pulagurtha and I am an associate professor in the Department of English, Brumhanandu Kishap Chandra College, Kolkata. And today I will, uh, in this lecture, I will try to give you an overview, an overview to what Romanticism is all about. So my lecture today is going to be about the key ideas and the key concepts as to what constitutes Romanticism. Now, um, when I begin talking about Romanticism with a capital R, as we all know, the first thing that I would like to say is that it is very difficult to define what Romanticism is. So, one cannot define what Romanticism is. However, what one can do is give a list of its characteristic features. In other words, what constitutes Romanticism. So, I cannot give you a three-line or a four-line definition of what Romanticism is. But I could give you a list of characteristic features which we um, think defines Romanticism or characterizes Romanticism. Now, the first thing that I would like to begin with is by telling you that this word Romanticism, it is supposed to have come from the Romances. Remember, when you do the Middle English period, you do something called the Middle English Romances. And it is from this word Romances that the word Romanticism was supposed to have originated. And it is generally, uh, initially, it was used to describe anything that is exotic, anything that is wonderful. For instance, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, the poet Coleridge, uh, when he was writing his um, work of literary criticism called the Biographia Literaria, there he writes about what his purpose was when he decides to write poems for the lyrical ballads. And there he says that his purpose was to write about persons and characters, supernatural or at least romantic. So what is he doing out here? He's kind of equating the, rom the word romantic with something exotic, with something wonderful. Right. So as I said, it is very, very difficult to define what English Romanticism exactly is. So now we use the word romanticism in the context of the English romanticism or romantic poets to refer to a group of writers who were writing in the later part of the 18th century and the earlier quarter, the first quarter of the 19th century. However, these poets, when they were living and writing, they were not described as romantic poets. How were they described? They are described by various terms. For instance, some of them were described as the Lakeists or the Lake District Poets. Some of them were described as the Cockneys. Keats was, a cock was often referred to as a Cockney poet. Uh, Wordsworth and Coleridge were described as the Lake District Poets, the Lakeists. So when they were writing, when they were living and when they were writing, they were not described by this word romantic poets. They were not described as the romantic poets. They were not referred to as the romantic poets. This practice of referring to this group of writers who were writing in the later part, almost the later uh, 10 years of the 18th century and the first quarter of the 19th century, this tendency to group them together into one group as the English romantic poets and to describe this period as romanticism is something which comes much later on in the middle of the 19th century and later on, much later on. And the reason why they were clubbed together is because in their works we find quite a number of characteristic features which enable them to be discussed as one whole. So we have quite a number of uh, writers, some of them very, very well known. Uh, for instance, William Blake, you have William Wordsworth, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, we have Byron, we have Keats, we have Robert Southey. 
we have a whole list of women poets who are much less read but who are very very important writers not just poets but also writing fiction also writing non fictional work so we have poets like dorothy wordsworth um Mary, mrs robinson we have amelia opi we have anna leticia barbold we have poets like felicia heman um sara hazlit so we have a whole lot of uh, poets both men and women poets who were writing uh, almost contemporary with one another and they were writing around the same period that is the later part the last 10 years of the 9, um, 18th century and the first quarter of the 19th century right and all of these writers and many more whom i have not yet referred to in all of their works we find certain characteristic features which is the reason why we group them together and call them the english romantic poets and we call this period as romanticism right um there has been a lot of critical work about what romanticism is all about right a number of very very important critics have spoken about what romanticism is as i told you right at the beginning of my lecture it is import very difficult to define what romanticism is why because here you have not one definition not one theory but you have many different theories many different philosophies many different ideas which come together right so there are a number of issues there are a number of ideas which these romantic poets discussed romantic writers wrote about right so which is why it is very very difficult to give a definition of what it is all about one thing which all critics agree is that romanticism has to do with a particular state of mind with a particular thought process right what is it about if i could briefly begin by telling you what it is about it is about life it is about the richness and fullness of life it is about multiplicity it is about various kinds of thing existing together in ways which we cannot even think about it is about turmoil it is about turbulence it is about violence there is conflict there is chaos but at the same time there is peace there is unity there is harmony there is uh, the natural order nature there is the music of the sphere and most importantly there is the human spirit so all of these various things figure in different ways in different romantic writers now one of the important things that was happening or that could actually be characteristic of the romantic of romanticism is that that literature was changing if you remember your reading of the 18th century literature you will remember that the 18th century literature is described or the 18th century itself is described as the age of prose reason and common sense with the romantic period with romanticism what we have is that romanticism is much less rational romanticism is much more emotional you know this is a very very basic idea of it it is less urbanized in other words it is less about the city and more about the rural setup more about the countryside this is not to say that people did not write about the city in when uh, romantic poets did not or romantic writers did not write about the city they did this is not to say that in romantic writing in the writing of the romantic period there is no reference to reason of course there is they were not writing anything and everything but this is in brief the characteristic of romantic literature romanticism is identified with a new interest in nature in external nature a new interest in man and in the relation of man to god there is an a new interest in the human soul and there is also an interest in cultures 
which are far removed in time and space. One thing you need to remember is that Romanticism did not only happen in England. It is a European phenomenon. It is happening elsewhere in Europe also. Right, so it is not something that is happening just in England. It is happening in Europe. And why was it happening in Europe? One of the reasons is that the late 18th century in Europe was basically an age of transition. A lot of change is happening at this point of time. What kind of change? The industrial revolution is beginning. There is modernization. There is democracy. The French revolution happens, 1789. There are the nationalist movements in Italy, in Germany, in Greece. All of these things were changing society, were bringing about changes in society and in human relationships. This particular period all over Europe was a period of great intellectual and political activity. And this, this intellectual and political activity provided the fertile ground for Romanticism. Many of the characteristic features we understand today that define Romanticism or describe Romanticism had their origin in literary and philosophical sources. For instance, I'll just refer in brief, for instance, the revolutionary ideas, the revolutionary naturalism of Rousseau, the French philosopher, the transcendental ideas that we find in the German philosophers Immanuel Kant and Hegel, right? And German Romanticism, the ideas of German Romanticism, the philosophy behind German Romanticism greatly influenced these English Romantic writers. So it influenced Romanticism as we understand it. Generally, you know, when, when you ask someone that when did the Romantic period begin? We say 1798. Why? Because 1798 is the publication of a slim volume of poems that changed the entire character of English poetry. And this volume of poems is called the Lyrical Ballads, which, was, which contained poems by two poets, William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. However, it is to be remembered that it is not 1798, which is when what we define as romantic poetry begins. Because many, many years before this, we find quite a number of what we define as characteristic features of romanticism present in the writers who were writing in what we would call the Augustan period. Right. So, for instance... Um, uh, we would find this uh, in say the 1740s itself we would find quite a number of works where we would find writers using concepts which today we would call romantic. So the idea that 1798 can be thought of as the beginning of the romantic period is not correct because much before that we find quite a number of ideas which today we would define as romantic, as characteristic of romanticism in the writers who were actually chronologically in the 18th century, writing in the 18th century, but many of their poems, many of their writings would actually be today defined as romantic. For instance, when you read Gray's Elegy in the Country Churchyard, uh, Gray, Burns and Blake, for instance, are described as the precursors of Romanticism. They form a kind of bridge between the poetry of the 18th century and Romantic poetry. Right. So, we, in, these, in, the, in the poetry of these poets also, we do find quite a number of characteristic features that we would define as Romantic today. Right. Um, so, for instance, in a work written in uh, 1759, uh, you know what the, the 
the features that we describe as romantic was found. For instance, in that work, the writer, a man, uh, uh, someone called Young, writes that he talks about organicism, he talks about growth, he talks about things growing from within. He talks about the ideas of originality and spontaneity, which are very, very important ideas in Romanticism. Right. So basically, even the, even the writers we described as pre-romantic and many writers even before these pre-romantics were writing, in their works depict certain characteristic features which today we would define as features of romanticism. Now, however, you know, in their works, these ideas were in germinal form, you know, in a very small germ form. Later on, these ideas were more worked up and uh, bettered actually. What ideas? The idea of imagination, the interest in nature, the idea of sensibility and <coughs> the emphasis on genius. These are important ideas which we find in many writers writing in the 18th century. But these ideas were all taken up by the Romantic poets and these become characteristics of Romantic literature and Romanticism. Right. Now, right. So, uh, I would therefore now begin talking about uh, these features which I have just spoken about. Romanticism marks a shift in the nature of man, in nature itself, in the relationship between man and nature, and the relationship between man and the universe. It also signals a change in the role and function of the artist and the relationship between the artist and his audience. A romantic poet is, as Wordsworth writes, a man speaking to men. We could alter it and say a woman speaking to women also. What does that mean? That means that in romantic poetry what is important is the poet. So in romantic poetry, in romanticism, if a poet writes a poem about a particular theme, it is because he feels this urge to express himself. He is not writing this poem because it was fashionable or because he has a particular agenda. Not only that, when writers in the romantic poet, uh, in the romantic period, when they wrote about certain things, they wrote in a language which was very simple because they believe that you're writing for the common person. You're writing in a language which everyone is able to read and understand, right? And you are writing because you want to write. You want to express something. You don't have any agenda as to why you would want to write. The romantic world, the world of romanticism is also a world where nature is very, very important. External nature, what you see around you is very, very important. It is nature that gives a lot of inspiration to many of the romantic writers. For instance, William Wordsworth, the best example that comes to mind when I talk about nature, William Wordsworth considered nature to be a nurturer, a mother figure, a friend figure. You know, uh, he found solace in the presence of nature. Right. So, in all of the works of the Romantic writers, you will find that nature plays a very, very important role. Right. They, they would think of nature as something living, as something which has a spirit, as something which links man to nature, to God. Everything is linked together in one organic unity. You cannot separate one from the other. See, in the poem, in Coleridge's poem, the rhyme of the ancient mariner, the mariner shoots the albatross all of a sudden. 
and then the ship becomes absolutely still there is no wind anywhere and a number of strange things happen the mariners find themselves at the receiving end a simple way to explain this is that by killing the albatross the ancient mariner killed life he disrupted this bond between human beings nature and god and because of that he has to pay a penance and what is this penance that is after he comes back home he has to tell everyone the story and he has to do it over and over and over again right and in romanticism the idea is that the artist is the medium through which nature's purposes are achieved in many uh, you know many examples of Roma of the romantic artist uh, they being they are described as a seer a prophet a visionary for instance blake he had these great visions right and as i was telling you earlier on also that uh, in the romantic um, in romanticism the writer is very very important right the writer is writing because he or she has certain things to express right and he or she would use the form which they are most comfortable with so if i'm writing a sonnet 14 lines too restrictive so let's make it 15 why because 14 lines are inadequate for me to express my ideas so the best form actually in the romantic period is the lyric you write as much as you want to right in the way that you want to so the author is very important the writer is very very important see we say that imagination is a very very important idea in romanticism what is imagination and they went into detailed descriptions of what imagination is i will not go into such detailed descriptions i'll just give you a brief idea what is imagination what is poetic imagination for these uh, for romanticism in romanticism you see you go somewhere right for a holiday you come back and you discuss your holiday trip with your friends so what do you do you tell them where you have been what you have seen so what are you doing you are recalling the whole trip okay now a poet would be very often doing that but what makes his imagination special is because he is able to bring together ideas and words which are very very uh, you know distinct which are so very different from one another but he is able to bring them together and infuse them into one united whole and if you have read wordsworth's poem about the daffodils i wandered lonely as a cloud what is he saying he saying i was walking through a field i see a field of beautiful daffodils and they seem to be laughing and dancing at me and then he goes off and then what does he say at the end he says that when i'm sad when i'm pensive when i'm melancholy all i have to do is think about that field of daffodils and then i'm no longer sad you see all of us have got that same kind of feelings when you are feeling low when you are feeling bad you think about something nice and that makes you feel better so you know the poet is able to bring together words and ideas very very uh, different words and ideas from very different spheres but is able to bring them together in such a way that the end product is an organic unity right he is expressing exactly what we feel but we would not be able to express the way a poet does and in romanticism imagination is very very important this is not to say that in the romantic period in the romantic age science was not important of course science was very very important you must remember in this period a number of new advances were happening in the field of science right and all of these romantic poets all of these romantic writers knew about all of these scientific discoveries and achievements 
not only did they know about it, they used these scientific theories in their poems. So if you read Shelley's To a Cloud, you will understand how much of knowledge about clouds he is using in his poems. So when I say that imagination is important, it is not as if they are completely cut off from the real world. No, they know exactly what is happening. This is also the period when colonization is happening. They know about it. And you have the writers at this point of time talking against it. Talking against slavery. So just because imagination is important does not necessarily mean that they are not talking about the practicalities of life, the realities of life. No, they are talking about everything. Keats was studying to become a doctor. He left it midway. Right. But a number of images from medicine find place in his poetry. When you have Mary Shelley writing the novel Frankenstein, she brings into the novel a lot of information, a lot of knowledge about contemporary science. So what I'm trying to tell you is that just because imagination is very important does not necessarily mean that these poets are completely cut off from the world, the real world. No, they know exactly everything. Yes, there is a fascination with dreams, with supernatural phenomena. They love to use genres like the romances. Uh, you know, they love to use supernatural incidents. And characters, but that does not mean that they were completely cut off from the world in which they were living. They were very much aware of that world. Not only that, they were also very much interested in the mind of man, what is happening within. In the interest in psychology, uh, you know, they're very much interested in all of that. In imagination, in perception. In various states of mind which cannot be explained rationally. But at the same time they were very much aware of the realities of the world in which they were living. And another very important factor. They were very very involved in the revolutionary climate of the time. You have to read Shelley's poetry to be aware of it. So this period is a period when a lot of things are happening as I told you. And... Uh, the romantic writers were aware of all of that. Right. So whatever was happening at that point of time, they were writing, using all of those in their poetry. But the way they were writing was different. Uh, they were questioning beliefs. They were exploring various possibilities of belief. They were questioning traditional ideas of how uh, a poem should be written of how a novel should be written and so which is why you know many of the writers actually refer to their works as experiments why because they are finding new ways in which to deal with the whole things right and romantic romanticism romantic literature appeals to the senses appeals to the imagination and as I said it is characterized by an abundant imagery which imagery which are basically taken from the natural world with the theme of imagination which is very very important and with the theme of nature and they are all linked together and man is a part of all of this so important points being imagination right nature the human being right all of these are very important in any understanding of romanticism. So if we can think of three, three criteria for romanticism, they would be imagination for the view of poetry, nature for the view of the world, and symbol and myth for poetic style. And all romantic writers cons considered nature as an organic whole. Organic whole meaning you put a seed in the soil, and slowly you have a small plant coming and that grows on. It is not mechanical. Mechanical is how you build a house. You put a brick and on top of that you put another brick. And that way you build a house. That is mechanical. But 
the romantic poets and all romantic writers and romanticism itself conceives of nature as an organic whole that grows from within they emphasized a they greatly emphasize on spontaneity you know you express what is there within you what you write comes from what is within you right and one of the very as i said the human being the individual becomes very very important and uh, all romantic um, poets uh, reveal this importance of the individual of imagination and of nature you have to remember that romanticism was not just restricted to poetry it is seen in uh, the political sphere also it is seen in the social religious and psychological area of human thought as well it was a widespread phenomenon which involved all spheres of human activity i hope in this lecture i have been able to give you a very brief account of what romanticism entails thank you so much